Hello. All right, this is pretty exciting. I, I was just taught how to take my, uh, take my own pulse, and boy, it's pretty fast right now. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but uh, I'm gonna read two things for you, like Jesse said. Uh, I'm gonna read this uh, piece that uh, is actually uh, for my creative nonfiction class with uh, Nicole. It'll be turned in tomorrow, right on schedule. <laughs> Um, this is uh, just a part of it. It's um, it's uh, sort of a. I, I the premise is that I, I picked my seventy five favorite words, and I, I put them all in a sentence. And so it's this is seventy five tiny memoirs. Um, so here we go. The color of the bed I shared with my older brother was spelled yellowy. I spotted the bullshit of movies with orcas in them from a very young age, thus beginning a trend of skepticism I would continue to refine for the rest of my life. I slowly became, became something close to a crustacean with the amount of time I spent in the bathtub, judging by my fingers. I began to gauge my mental health by comparing the ratio of the number of grass blades seen in a day to hours spent alone in my room. The burgundy smeared on my teeth marked me cane-like as a wanderer through strange, ancient, mind-changing liquids. The etymology of the word Wednesday would come to define my sobriety. I think I spoke Anglo-Saxon in the sun and Latin at night. I would, on walks, astrally project my imagination into the corner of a nautilus shell somewhere in the late Ordovician and estimate longevities based on how cowardly I felt that day. I watched, tongue agog and teeth birthed, as hundreds of bent heads bumped around me right here in the Holocene, and I pictured the eventual museum dioramas I could expect to someday be a part of. I learned French. I forgot the French, but I gained a French press. <laughs> I keep the French press next to the microwave. There are two limes on the microwave, and when I eat one lime, I replace it with another to preserve the duality of limes. A crust of lime and salt perpetually grows lichenishly around the rims of a handful of the glasses in the cupboard above the microwave. I abandon all coherency in quest of coconuts. If I had one aim, it would be to wrest the flesh from the world, cleave it like the coconuts are cloven, and eat hungry on splendor, if nothing else. As a fellow insomniac, I trade with my roommate my melatonin for the privilege of watching horror movies together in the living room, at least twice a week. I've lost much of the hearing on my left side and I can shut off sound like an eyelid by plugging my right ear. I'm not crying, I just have runny eyes. I'm a master, I am a masterful cynic, a connoisseur of sophistry, and I will tell you all about it, because like nature, the sophist abhors a vacuum, and also like nature, the cynic has rain for blood. I'm leaving purple behind and becoming a primary sort of person, I don't know, and I don't know what this says about me as a, a human, but I do know that it's good for my painting. Or at least I used to think this, but my brushes are gone and my canvas is used up and my patients converted cell by cell from the marathon concentration of the oil painter to the unwieldy gyroscope of the writerly mind. I would hunt for the first time in 2011 and cleave a gopher into two separate pieces with a 22 rifle and this would be the beginning and end of my interest in rodent viscera, not including two mouse traps and an unflushed roommate toilet. Show me the cucumber and I'll show you the pickle. I often, re I often function as my own personal bastard to enjoy the, the experience of self-righteous resentment without r the risk of slipping into anything mo so insidious that self-love can't keep me safe. Without the settling dream of snow over a way station roof banked against the sides of cherry trees, without Japan, I'd suffocate under the gauze of the magicless here. I begin each day feeling as though I have only just grown the ability to think, and until now I've been some kind of... I I dead avatar of myself. This results in a handy immediacy, but the walk to work is exhausting. Across the cafe, there's a toddler with a ball cap and aviators teaching himself chess on the edge of a slate berm under the window of a cr with a crystal set. And I'm wondering how appropriate it, would, appropriate it would be for me to go over and start teaching him openings. Frustration is when you move to a new city and your mother learns for the first time that cockroaches can fly. I have known the kind of blue, I have known a kind of blue like a timely trampoline that catches you and prisms you and eats the colors. I have been rock salt, swimming where I never thought I'd swim, a glob of sea rack breathing on the sand. I have told you that I have been a whale. In high school, I wrote an essay on, the tiny, on a tiny book called The Pearl, and I was awarded with a proclamation from my English teacher that I wrote as if English were my second language. <laughs> I know now that it was praise. And I try to approach all objects as though everything I have ever been taught about them was a lie. 
I have gone through periodic baking phases in my life that correspond with feelings of security and contentment. I think I'm on about a five-year cycle. I think the process of returning to dust is a gradual rather than an immediate one, and I've already buried half my hair. Chaucer's sun shines on me. Shakespeare's sea wind fills my closets with coats. P.G. Woodhouse's bugs buzz past my elbows. Shirley Jackson's oddnesses zip around me with human voices. And I, if I am nothing but glue for good things, then I've done well. I live in northern Arizona, but I'm daily projected to the Hebridean coast in the form of a glass of whiskey, or to some corner of Dublin with a whiskey EY. I think they see translucent flickerings of me there. At the age of 12, I had an incorrigible suspicion that the eternity of 12 years is all any human should have to live. And 12 years later, I find that I've forgotten everything that happened before that revelation. My consciousness began with the conviction that I was already too old. I rolled down a lot of grassy hills when I was little, and I messed up the earth's hair. I am a complex iteration of a very simple thing. One small unit of pesky life, racked and stretched by compulsive introspection. Better in bed, better quiet. If I were a fish, I'd be fresh water, I think, more in control of myself in a pond or a stream. I'd have my shit together as a freshwater fish. I picture my body as a glob of sun dust, and then I picture some giant me watching this sun dust moat, and then I go for a run and stop all that silly shit and revert to being irritated at slow walkers and cars. I have circumnavigated a two-mile loop in downtown Flagstaff at a steady run three times a week for four years, not counting slow days, and according to my calculations, since I started running, I have earned myself the right to eat 640 Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> a decent portion of my worldview is contingent on whether or not coral is a living organism. I am one Google search away from a final cynicism. I've never learned how to clean a paintbrush, so I keep buying new ones cheap, and my desk is covered with a multicolored layer of petrified bristles. My shoes were caravels, and the creek behind my house was the Atlantic. My mother's father answers to a few different names, including Gagu, Granddad, Pops, and Mr. Wonderful. And someday I hope to bear half as much stateliness and confidence standing straight up as he does at 90 degrees. There was a certain hilarity in the disgraced angle of the bedsheets, but eventually we gave up and she went home, and I discovered that though there are many things two people could do in a twin bed, sleep is not one of them. I wiggled through the snow and murals and arc sodium lamps, lamps twitched from the odd funguses I had eaten, imagining the Otsi in me, looking in windows, looking in windows, looking in windows. I imagine in the future my distaste for insects will develop and I will be in danger of becoming one of those earwig paranoids, shaking my shoes before each walk. And I also imagine that the grain of every coming day is going to make a powder, a coffee powder, or a fog, or a cloud, and I already feel that I am stumbling and that all growth is a game of Marco Polo with the people you trust. If it weren't for a jasmine tea, these things would bother me. If green were any assurance of permanency and the promise of autumn gold a lie, I would think 24 years old a lot older. And everything I begin to think here where I stand is calico, and if it isn't, don't trust it. When I painted, I painted carmine for the arteries beneath my lips. I used to think that if I were to bury a pair of shoes, I could grow a walking plant. When I, beca when I became a teacher, I bought a watch for the very first time. It stays on my wrist, a time-traveling blue bangle that reminds me how little I've done and how much I still have to do, and the meager allotment of time for all of this. I am my own junta, bossing myself around, an oligarchy of the mind with paranoid, paranoid warring states prioritizing one thing over another. Hello, my name is Eric Doremi Fasolati Vigi. I drink Cori Vrekian. I pull the covers over myself and sleep like a mossed stone in a low glen. I stumble forward through the week like tumbling, and sa like tumbling sand cut between currents. I peak and trough like anybody else. I shake after orgasms. I depend on carrot spears and cheese cubes to feel comfortable at parties. I fall with my hands out. I am a drifting box of neurons orbiting a flagstaff. I did poli sci in school like everybody else and would take Machiavellian as a compliment. I am uh, concerned with making art out of my embarrassments. I get nauseous at the sight of blood. I get nauseous at the sight of linoleum. Drains discomfort me. I have an Oedipal relationship with the clay that made me. I get those freezing nightmares where you can't move but you're awake and there are people in your room. I wear baseball hats like denim crowns. My birthstone is opal. My sign is Libra. It's nice to meet you on this of all roads.